Hey y'all, my name is Tyson, and this time around, let's build some polyhedra. Polyhedra, polyhedron, um, first thing off the bat, I, I'm probably gonna get some of these terms right, uh, wrong, so please uh, uh, forgive me or bear with me. Um, what I think is gonna be really interesting about this though is that we're gonna to try to build all of these forms using the native tools because it's gonna be excellent practice in kind of some advanced rotate tool, uh, inference locking, just modeling off the axis because of the, the angles that we're gonna have and, and some techniques that we don't may not typically use. So this is gonna be a fun exercise. Let's jump into it. All right, um, before we go uh, start modeling, I wanna review um, some concepts that are gonna be really important to what we're doing. The first is that the rotate tool, many of you know that you can rotate and that it will align to surfaces or that you can hit the arrow keys. Say if I wanted to rotate this triangle, I can hit the arrow keys to uh, set my rotation direction. But another way you can do that is click and drag the mouse to create your own. So if I wanted to rotate this about this edge or this edge, I'm dragging the mouse. As soon as I let go, now I can pick a point and use the rotate tool like normal. So that's the first thing to uh, know or be refreshed of is, is using the rotate tool in that way, clicking and dragging. The other thing to know, if I click here, drag, so I quickly establish that as my base, I'm gonna click here, and it used to be in SketchUp that there was no inference, there was no way to say, I want this point to meet this surface. Well, now there is this, inference point was introduced um, in, I believe the most recent version of SketchUp. So this may only be available in version 2024, but this opens up some interesting possibilities. So for example, if we rotate this, again, I'm gonna click and drag to quickly establish that. I could probably grab anywhere along this edge, let's say here, start to rotate this and Indeed, I can find where that point would intersect. That said, I think it's usually easier to grab uh, an end point or corner of a group. So that's what I'm gonna be trying to do is to establish that, um, you know, where that's gonna meet up with the surface. That's gonna be key to how we're gonna make this work. So keep that in mind. That, that is fairly new to the rotate tool, that new inference, we're gonna use that. The other thing that I want to at least quickly cover is that there's, um, there's other videos, there's other ways to model shapes like this, as uh, often is the case, there's multiple ways to approach something. We're gonna do something a little different today than what I've seen out there, but just so you know, we're gonna use uh, primarily native tools um, to do the modeling, but I did want to at least, uh, show that, for example, a lot of polyhedra are based on, you know, as you get more and more complicated, they're still based on, um, simpler versions. So for example, we're going to model this Icos, <laughs> Icosidodecahedron. <laughs> we're going to model this using native tools but you could also create the dodecahedron. And if I come in here, select these faces, select all of these. For example, there is a plugin, this plugin, and it is called SU2Components. SU uh, SU One of these will turn each face into its own component uh, or uh, all of them into a component. So if I do this, click this button, all of these faces have been turned into components. And so for example, I could offset one, push it in a little bit, make this very interesting. 
let me undo. The other thing that we could quickly do is draw lines and we're gonna quickly get this form. In fact, if I use a, a, a polygon, I'm sorry, a pentagon, and just draw it really quickly and then erase those edges of that component I don't need. You can see we're left. All we'd have to do is trace over these and we'd have the icosidodecahedron. <laughs> so um, just to introduce that there are multiple ways to uh, approach this. And with that said, let's jump in. And we're gonna build these, uh, we'll just sort of work our way down. The, dodeca the dodecahedron is actually gonna be really easy for us to do. And here's how we're gonna approach it. Let's use the polygon tool. And we're gonna draw uh, any size uh, pentagon. And I'm gonna quickly group this. And then when we're creating this, or when I'm looking at any of these, really, I don't understand how they're created. I am fully reverse engineering what already exists out there. And so in this case, when I look at this one, the dodecahedron, I can see that it's just this same sized um, pentagon, and that here they are rotated up to where this edge would meet exactly. Well, that's perfect because using that new inference point, that new uh, way to rotate, we can do that. So I'm gonna draw a reference surface. So let me find this edge, draw back, and then I'll just select, say this edge, hold the shift key to lock and extend this out. And let me just group this. Perfect. Let me rotate a copy of this. Now here's where, um, back here where I was talking about how it's easier to uh, rotate this up by corners or known points. I need to rotate this now to where it would meet with this surface. So if I just try and do that, um, it I'm not grabbing a point that, see how my cursor and my point's not the same? So what will help us do this is I'm gonna draw a simple line, I'm gonna lock it and then draw it exactly to, right? So you see what we have here? So I'm gonna select this, uh, I keep getting my terms wrong, this pentagon, and rotate it, but I'm gonna start my rotation tool from the, this point. So I click drag to establish that baseline, and then click on this point. That will allow me, I rotate around, it should allow me to rotate that up till I see, there it is, from radius on face and group. I'm gonna carefully click, and it has rotated that exactly to where it would meet up with the adjacent um, the adjacent polygons. And now I can simply just rotate copies of this four times, erase these parts that I don't need, I'll select it all, invoke the flip tool, let's just mirror this up and use the rotate tool. We'll find the center of our, there's so many references. It's it, like, come on, come on. Give me the, give me the one we're asking for here. There we go. Grab that corner, move it to rotate it to that corner, and then just move these back into place. And we can test if our geometry really does uh, meet up together by simply ungrouping these and seeing if those edges weld. Now, if we select this, group it, and run 
the solid inspector, as well as telling us our faces are reversed. But other than that, nice. Everything is great. So that is the key, is this idea that we can rotate uh, these surfaces up until they meet where you know an adjacent piece of geometry would be, and we can create those surfaces to help us do that. So with that in mind, let's move to our next one. Here, let me... We just created that. Come on, throw it away, even though we have it. <laughs> okay, uh, icosahedron. Icosahedron? <laughs> Again, <I'm laughs> I don't know entirely. Part of the fun of an exercise like this is saying, okay, well, based on how we created this one, can we, uh, how, how did we create this one? Well, how do we rotate one of these triangles such that it's, I don't know. What we can do um, after some trial and error is that when we look at this, we see, again, this is a pentagon with equilateral triangles. And with, if we know that, um, we can create this top shape. So let's draw a pentagon, group it, and we're not going to draw a triangle. You know, this is not an equilateral triangle. That's not what we need. What we can do, though, is simply draw a line, select that line, rotate a copy of it, just over here somewhere. I'm going to double click, which is going to select both of our edges and group that so that now we can draw another line and we're just going to extend this out because that's all we need. This edge is the right length. We just need to know where, right there, where it meets up. And that will give us our equilateral triangle. So we've got this group. All right, now, same thing as before. We can see that all these triangles meet up with each other. We just need a, some bit of geometry that's going to uh, give us that. So we need to rotate this. And this one we might not need to... Uh, create anything else. So if I select it, go to the rotate tool, click and drag to, or I could just hit an arrow key, uh, the, the right arrow key, grab my point, move this till it basically goes to here. Now I, I've seen this done where you, essentially you also realize that you can just draw a vertical edge, right? We're doing the same thing, but that's what we needed. Let's rotate this. I'm going to tap the up arrow key to lock the blue direction and then rotate copies. So that's part of it. That's the top and or bottom. But how do we get the other piece? Well, let's, let's uh, try this. I'm going to, Make a copy, use the flip tool. And then we need to rotate this. And again, I'm gonna tap the up arrow key to lock it to the vertical direction and rotate this so it meets the midpoint. So where does this, right? This triangle needs to be rotated so that it would meet exactly at this point. Well, how? Do we know that? Well, here's one way we could do it. If I just draw a vertical line, we know it needs to rotate until it meets that line. Because if we try and rotate it to that point, it's not going to, it's going to be problematic. You know, if I'm rotating a copy, because it's not that point, it's not that, like, we don't know exactly where that is. But let me just grab this move it down a little bit, and then we're gonna rotate again. I'll just say tap the right arrow key, click, click, and rotate, invoke a copy, that until it meets, oh, not the midpoint. I happen to be there, right there, 
right? Now we can erase this. And move this down. Careful. Perfect. Um, and from here, we could just draw in the rest of the lines or copy this around. Um, right. What's that? Four times. If I ungroup this. When we create these, we create faces inside as well. So we can delete those as we go. But let me quickly rotate. Oops. And I want to rotate that lock to the blue direction. Four copies. Group it. Use the uh, solid inspector to fix that internal face and the reverse faces. There we go. That uh, That is what we're going to do for the rest of these, for these other two, is essentially we're using the rotate um, and also this ability to say, where do we rotate you know, one of these pieces down to? Um, and we just draw geometry as needed to, to find out. All right, how are we going to do this one? We're going to start with the same as uh, the others. But this, in this case, we need a uh, hexagon and a pentagon with the same edge. And then we're gonna rotate our hexagon uh, up and that will give us the top and then we'll work our way from there. So let's see, let's start here. I'll group this to start or make it a component by all means. Um, I tend to, to explode everything to create a solid object, but that may not be where you're headed. So. Obviously make that a component if you want. Now here we need um, a six sided. So we're gonna change the size to six. This is not going to draw originally where we need it to. Um, so what can we do about that? Well, in this case, It's pretty straightforward, so I'm going to group that. We're going to say, let's measure one edge here. And it measures two feet and some change, because we're not worried about how big this is. So let's just say that's two feet. And resize that group. And then we'll do the same here. Measure it with the tape measure tool. Measure one edge. Whatever it is, we're going to type in two feet. Resize. So that those two edges... Uh, are exactly where we need to be. And then from there, we've done the rest of this um, before. So we're gonna find that midpoint because we need to create a surface. We may need to extend that surface. So I'll grab that edge, lock to this existing edge and just extend it out. If you're not familiar with locking to existing geometry, again, one of the reasons why this is just good practice, something to work on. And again, I want to rotate this point up by some point over here that we don't have. Well, we kind of have it with our group, but just in case, I'm gonna draw a line, extend that out. Then select, rotate from this point and this corner, rotate it up till we find, see that, that nice uh, inference there. Awesome, that's what we need. Rotate this. Five times. <clears throat> okay, so with that, how are we gonna do the rest of this? When we look at a truncated icosahedron, you have the top and bottom, which is this sort of flower of, a, the, of the, uh, 
pentagon and the hexagons. That's on the top and bottom. And then you have alternating pentagon, hexagon, uh, hexagon, pentagon. So these alternating things. Well, we just need to get one set of these and the rest will create themselves. So let's start with this. Let's take our um, geometry here and copy it uh, or flip it upwards. Again, this, this like others needs to be rotated. So we're going to rotate this. We need to find that center point and carefully rotate. Let's see, am I rotating from here to here? And I'm going to move this up a little bit higher than it should be. But the first thing we can do, and, and this is good practice for the rotate tool, is we can see that we have this same pentagon and it needs to just match up here. Well, once we match up these two sides, this is going to be at the correct angle. So that's all we need to do is just make a copy from here to here and then figure out how to rotate this so that it meets up with these other two sides. Well, this is a, sometimes <laughs> this is just one of those things where we're just going to try a couple things until we get this to work. The first thing I want to do is I'm rotating along this edge until this meets, um, this edge here. And then I'm going to rotate and I want this to be on this surface. So I'm going to press the down arrow key. I'll click here and somewhere here, if I turn x-ray mode on is this corner and I'm going to rotate it into place here. So we've got one edge established and that just, that means that with that edge, we can rotate, click drag along this edge to establish that as the base and then click here and rotate this down to this point. So if you haven't, you know, done this sort of, um, I don't know what to call it other than <laughs> convoluted rotating, it sometimes just takes sort of, you just need to align one side as a starting point and then keep going from there. All right, now let's do the same thing. I'm going to grab one of these and I need to rotate this. I'm not entirely sure. I think let's try it. Well, where does this meet up? That's not what we want. And that's not going to be what we want. What about this? None of these are working again. A good place to start is just to say, all right, fine. I just need some intersection here and that will, that will, uh, be enough to start. I'm not kidding. Oh, we were doing okay up till now. Um, let me make this oh, come on. see how I can just, I can find something and that should give me a place to start and say, okay, I'll start with that. This imaginary line. and line this up with, if I turn x-ray mode on, right? So now we've, now we've made these uh, parallel. Now we can just grab one of these, hold it down, tap down. And there, <laughs> I'm kind of just, uh, uh, you know, floundering around in real time. And I hope that you see like, yeah, I, I Depending on the scenario, I, I don't always immediately re recall, you know, what's the best approach, but you can get there eventually. And this is another case where 
if we've set this up right, we can just draw a vertical line and then rotate this basically from this point till it meets up that line. There it is. Perfect. Erase that. Move these down into place and we are in business. Now we can just fill in the rest, right? Because now we can take these two, rotate them. Um, four times, I believe. And, um, uh, let's just ungroup this and do one of these that should give us these ones and then we'll rotate those as well four times did it work i think it did it looks pretty good let's group this run our um solid inspector Reverse those faces. All right, I am running really long on this one, but you know that I hope this is kind of the thing where it just gives you some ideas of like a different way to approach this. This last one, we don't have to build it out. We showed one way to approach it, which is just start with a dodecahedron. How uh, you could approach this, um, if you think of the type of thing we've been doing where we're rotating one surface till it meets another, in this case, it's not a surface, but if you see this pentagon and this one, these pentagons are rotated to where they'll meet at this point. So instead of the, oops, five sides. So if we had one and I quickly group that, flip it and move it back into place. Instead of trying to meet up a surface with an edge, we're rotating something like this. And how do we know where to meet? We might need to draw a little bit of reference geometry, but let's say we, we know that it needs to rotate basically till it would meet up here um, through the middle. So if we draw a line, in this way, and build our surface, select this, Select this edge, move, lock, extend. Let's move this up a little bit. Group that one. And then we need to move this up to where this point would meet it. And so we're drawing, is it here? So we rotate, click, drag to establish that point from here rotating up till that point. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll find it. I don't know if it's giving us these points, but I, I want to see that uh, there it is, that, that particular inference. That should be Oops. The start we need. And from here, we could just um, midpoint to 
sometimes there's turn x-ray mode on and that should help us to find it right so there we go again and then we could fill those in fill those edges in and carry on so same idea just rotating about a point instead of about an edge nice okay uh i i have no idea um i probably went a little long on that one because it is a little bit of a fiddling but i hope it gave you an idea of how you could approach something that might be like how would i how would i do that and that new inference in particular that inference that allows you to rotate one point or a face and and, and lock a point and meet another face uh, or an edge that unlocks all of this um, opportunity to, to approach this in kind of a unique way. Um, so try it, try it if you haven't, and I don't know, go have some fun. I thought this was, I thought this was fun. Uh, exploring this took me a while to figure out some of these, um, clearly made some mistakes or, or you get geometry a little off. That's just part of the, that's part of the, the process, right? Let, let me know what you think. Uh, let us know if you have a different approach or different ideas or things that we should try or show or, if, you know, just any suggestions at all. We, we definitely want to hear uh, what you'd like us to cover. Uh, as always, if you haven't, like and subscribe. And thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time.